Hi, I'm John Cooper, the Chair of Chemistry. Welcome to our tour. So here we are in the Chemistry Building. This is the main entrance. And this is the uh, planetarium and the digital theater. Here we are at the, main, at the north end main entrance of the grand entranceway and then the floating staircase which is just getting constructed and then a very large interactive student space for studying and even just hanging out before the labs, active learning, tutoring and lectures begin. So here on the first floor we have the active learning center as well as the freshman labs, the lecture hall which is the digital theater and we have the Student Success Center, which is the tutoring center. And now all these activities are in one place in one building. There's a new synergy going on. So here we are on the second floor, and each end of the, of the upper stories are designed the same. So here's an administrative side. You see this large open space, which is designed to hold 15 graduate students, and their graduate student desk here. And then surrounding that are faculty offices. So we have one, two, three, four, and five faculty offices. So here's one of the research labs. This is a synthetic organic research lab. It's assigned to uh, Professor Bala Ramji. On this side we have Dr. Wong's research lab and then at the very far end she has a lot of photochemistry experiments and a lot of hood space for a lot of uh, synthetic reactions. So here we have another, uh, another organic synthetic research lab. This is an acid hood. And an acid hood can withstand any of our harshest acids from perchloric to sulfuric and nitric. Every floor we have these interactive student spaces and they're just getting started with this right now. But on every wall we're going to have, uh, so this wall has whiteboards from, from floor all the way up to the ceiling where students, well not quite the ceiling, it's about eight feet up, where students can do reactions and, and, uh, and study together. We also have some bench top. Uh, tables with stools for interaction okay. and then over on this side on every floor right in the middle uh, there's some chairs and desks and tables as well as a very large video screen where students can have interactive study space together. So that is one of the big themes in Virginia is for all of our education buildings to have interactive spaces and you'll see this particular theme repeated as we go up each floor. And this is Professor uh, Craig Bass's lab so it's mainly, the main feature of this is very high speed uh, data connections to the supercomputer backbones. So on the second floor we also have our undergraduate organic um, laboratories and we're very excited about these labs. In addition to being mediated in the front of the room, um, every student uh, has its, his own hood, his or her own hood. And these are very specially designed hoods. They've only been out for a few years. And as you'll notice, you can look across the room and even though there are hoods everywhere, because there are glass all around, you can actually see what's happening throughout the lab. And that's very important for safety with the different TAs. It's a very exciting room and the reason it's so exciting is after you synthesize your molecules in this room, you have to analyze the molecules. So this room over here contains all of our chemical analysis equipment. And as you can see, we have a big glass wall where you can see directly in. So some of the students will still be making their molecules while others are in here analyzing. And the, the professors and lecturers can, and, and uh, teaching assistants can see the students in both spaces. We're still in the organic chemistry lab for undergraduates. And if you come around in the back corner of each of the undergraduate organic labs, you'll notice a hood. But when you look through the hood, you see a room on the other side. And this is a feed-through hood. We can maintain security while at the same time all the students have access to the chemicals they need as they're doing their reactions. Here we are in the instrumentation room which supports both of the organic labs with the two large two windows. And in this, in this room we have Fourier transform uh, spectrometers, IR spectrometers, Raman spectrometers, gas chromatography, mass spec GC, mass spec LC, and one of the most exciting instruments we have it goes right here. It's a high field, 400 megahertz NMR, just for our undergraduate students. And uh, this is a robotically controlled instrument. So we are currently the only laboratory in Virginia at a, at a Virginia university where every single organic student gets to use high field NMR. So they make their chemicals, they make their molecules, and they come in here and analyze it. And they're using world-class instrumentation to do it. And we're so excited about this 
that we put in a big window right here. So there's a window right here. And as you can see, as you walk out into this space, we're back into the interactive uh, area for the students on the first floor with the floating staircase. And then surrounding this interactive area, which allows you to see directly into the second floor labs, is a 100 foot long window that is 40 feet high. And so this is one of the key architectural design features of this building, science on display. You can see directly into the study spaces, the freshman laboratories, and the organic laboratories, and even the high-end instrumentation laboratories. So throughout the building, there are some small specialty spaces. So this is one of those spaces on the uh, north end. And so that we're on the second floor, and this is a room designed with a lot of multimedia functions, and it's specifically designed for the uh, teaching assistants to support online classes. So this is another one of those interactive spaces. So this is actually a small conference room. And you can see that this would be a room that might be well utilized by students as well as research group. Has fantastic views overlooking both the, both the, the grand entrance on the south side as well as all of campus. So as you recall from the second floor, we had the interactive spaces for the faculty and the graduate students. Now we're on the third floor and you see a very similar space. So 15 graduate students and then one, two, three, four, five faculty offices. So each floor is a slightly different shade of uh, ODU accent colors. As you'll notice, this interactive area has a lot of visibility. This is all glass, glass wall and a door with uh, glass panes in it. And yet, because of PROC security, it's very secure, but it's tied in integrally with the undergraduate students and their spaces too. So now we're on the third floor, and uh, this research lab belongs to Alvin Holder, who's a synthetic inorganic chemist. Once again, a lot of hood space. So still on the third floor, directly across from the research lab, we have the analytical lab. There's actually gonna be a small sitting space up here where students can receive instruction and there'll be a projection system for, for mediated uh, pre-lectures before lab begins. And then a similar design as we had downstairs with organic, we have a, a large wall where you can see directly into a second room. And this is the instrumentation room for the upper level chemistry courses. So there's shared instrumentation in this room. And on the far side, another glass wall or glass window that sees into the synthetic inorganic and PCHEM labs. So here's the other instrumentation room. So this is more advanced instrumentation. Uh, we have uh, spectral microscopes in here, as well as all the instruments required for the higher level labs. And the see-through windows allow both analytical and the PCHEM inorganic labs to see directly in while labs being taught. So still on the third floor, uh, another research lab. Uh, this is uh, Professor Peter Bernass Research Lab. Uh, Peter is one of our one of the eminent scholars on campus and state-of-the-art high-resolution spectrometers for uh, simulating atmospheres on other planets. And as many of you know, Peter is the chief missions uh, scientist on the ACE satellite that does the not only the chemical monitoring of our atmosphere but also of other planets. And because of all this stuff that he does trying to model other planets, he has lots of heavy electronics. And so he built a superstructure to hold all the electronics to support the spectroscopy that goes on. And they tell me it's enough to hold, uh, I think they said 10 pickup trucks. This is the computational lab on the, on the third floor. This is a, it's a teaching lab where students learn molecular modeling. Um, and this will be outfitted with all the modeling workstations. Professor Patrick Hatcher, who is the uh, Batten Endowed Chair for Physical Sciences, is an environmental chemist. So now we see not quite as much uh, hood space, more bench top space for his specialized instrumentation. Pat does biofuel research, and one of the things he works on is uh, some hydrogen explosions that he measures the heat of combustion on, and so this is designed specifically for his, uh, his large uh, combustion chambers. It was assigned to Professor Jingyong Mao, and we are so excited because Jingyong was promoted to full professor. And Jingyong Mao is one of the most prolific uh, in, uh, researchers we have at ODU. So here we are on the fourth floor. Of course, we'll have our, our window wall and our door right here with Crocs access. And uh, once again, the five faculty offices, 
surrounding the interactive space for the, for the graduate students. We now have a four-year research degree in chemistry, and this is a new space. We've never had anything like this before. This is dedicated to undergraduate research. So up on the fourth floor now, our final computational space. Uh, this is Jennifer Powson's uh, computational space. Uh, so Jennifer, once again, does a lot of protein molecular modeling. And so just like on the second floor, we had a big glass wall showing off the 400 megahertz high, in it, high field NMR. Here we have another window. And right here we have our newly purchased 600 megahertz NMR. Our new meeting room is plenty big to hold all of our faculty and it has gorgeous views. And then we complete our inside tour of the building with the final space at the far end, at the south end of the fourth floor of the building. Uh, and once again, space for 15 graduate students and then the five faculty offices surrounding the graduate students. All of these interactive spaces, starting with the large one on the, on the first floor and then continuing all the way up, it almost becomes, or hopefully becomes, a destination spot even when the students aren't in class.